Welcome to the In Vibe Live podcast with Amy Parker and Cheryl Dunn. By tuning in, you are joining a community that will inspire you to increase balance, wellness, and joy in your life. We'll offer expert information and insightful conversations to help us all on our journey to live more in vibe. For more information and articles, remember to also check out our website at invibelife.com. That's E-N-V-I-B-E-L-I-F-E.com. And we're grateful that you're here. Hi, and welcome to the In Vibe Life podcast. I'm Amy Parker here with Cheryl Dunn. Hello. And we're so excited that you've joined us today as always. Cheryl and I want to touch on a subject today that has been extremely difficult for us and we find in other people we know or clients or um, family members, we've seen how difficult it is in them and that is boundaries. Um, When we set off to start in Vibe Life and what we hope to do in these podcasts, as you've heard us say over and over, if you've tuned in a couple times, is to inspire balance and wellness in your life. And as we've been going on our journey, I think we found along the way, um, sometimes in more difficult ways than others, that one of the most key ingredients to having balance in your life is having the ability to set boundaries, knowing when to do that, knowing how to do it, what it even means. So first of all, let's talk about that, Cheryl. Like, what is a boundary? Let's let's give some examples. What do you think a boundary is? Well... A real easy black and white boundary that I have found um, is at the office. I think that's a good, clear one to explain. At the office, I feel like sometimes, because my husband and I own the business together, um, and this is at a different office, not the office of me and Amy, (laughs) (laughs) at that office, um, people need my attention. You know, and they need it. They need to ask me questions and they need this and they need that. And, and that's fine. They do need that. But there are times when I need to shut my door and really focus on maybe doing the payroll or the tax stuff or checking my e- emails. You know, I need, I know I have a little window of time to get that stuff done. So a good way for me to set a boundary with my staff is I'll put a little door hanger on my door, outside of my office door. And so they know, okay, if the door hanger is there, come back later. If the door hanger is not there, knock and come on in. Because sometimes it's okay to just come in my office and talk to me. But at other times, I really need that space because I've gone and I've set a timer for myself. This is a little tool that I use saying, okay, Cheryl, you have one hour and I really need to work on the podcast with Amy, right? I need to work on some Mm -hmm. of our content. So I'll say, okay, well, out of this hour, I'm going to give my brain to only focus on my podcast that I'm going to do with Amy. And so I'll set my timer for 30 minutes. And I know within those 30 minutes, I'm not going to go get water. I'm not going to pee. I'm not going to check an email. I'm not going to look at the text that comes through. You know, those 30 minutes are simply going to be for what my intention was during those 30 minutes. And so say I was using the example of working on the podcast. Now, Amy and I are going to record a podcast on boundaries, and I really need to focus on what that means to me and write it down before I meet with Amy so that we can come together and make it very productive. And so I'll set that timer for 30 minutes, knowing that At the end of the 30 minutes, I've got five minutes to go pee, answer the phone, whatever, whatever time I've allotted myself. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, the door hanger is a good boundary that I've used at the office. And the timer is kind of a boundary I've used with myself so that I don't, I squirrel easy. And you can ask my husband, (laughs) he often, I'll be talking and he goes, you just squirreled on me because he won't know where my thoughts gone because it's drifted off to something else versus what we were talking about. So mm-hmm. the timer thing kind of helps me get in focus. Is that what we were asking, Amy? I'm not sure. It is, okay. but I also feel like we need to give a more, maybe a more conceptual definition. Okay. Or So here's the thing. We can't do everything. No. We can't be everywhere. Although I try. That's the thing. <laughs> So that's that, what we're yes, That's yes, the problem. So yes, many of us yes. try to do everything. And it uh-huh. can, there can be so many different reasons. Uh-huh. It can be out of you're just a super high energy person who likes to do everything, which is Cheryl's case, 
or maybe you just feel like you ought to do everything for a bunny yeah, helps you. Like I yeah, I know I fall into that trap a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just not possible. If mm -hmm. you're going everywhere all the time for everyone, mm -hmm. I don't, I necessarily think you can't have balance. Like the two can't exist at the same time. Completely. Being stretched thin and feeling like your day-to-day -day life is in balance. Doesn't work. Are really opposite sides of the coin. Yes. And that doesn't mean you can't be busy. And for, and right. for some people um, running at a super hectic pace or having really full days. Feeds is their soul. Yeah, yeah feeds they love them. it. And it yeah. is what they are. Yeah. So I, I think that's the, you know, the first question to ask mm -hmm. is what do I want my days to look like? And when I'm running like that from thing to thing, to thing, to thing, really at the end of the day, do I feel good? Uh -huh. Not necessarily, even though my days are usually scheduled like that. Um, when my day is a little lighter and not booked back to back, the end of the day, I can sit on the couch and be like, huh, great day versus Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. Right. You're just too tired I'm to too do tired anything for yourself to, then. Yeah. So, so that's the first thing. So let's, let's change the way we think about boundaries. Mm -hmm. Cause I think the reason a lot of people are scared of boundaries and I'm those who can't see me, I'm using air quotes, which mm -hmm. is kind of silly, but scared of boundaries is cause it feels mean or like a negative yeah. or like a no. And if I'm mean to people or tell everyone, no, no one's going to like me. I'm not going to have any friends. This is where I want to flip it on the head. Stop thinking of boundaries as a no and think of what am I saying yes to in my life? Yes, I love that. And, it, and you really said that when you were giving your example because you weren't hanging something on your door for the purpose of eliminating things from your life. It's because you had things you were putting your energy, attention, and focus into. Mm -hmm. So you were just choosing <laughs> what you were spending that right. time on based on what your priorities for that day or that week or life in general what needed to be done. are right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, I think that's the first step is think about what your yeses are oh, and that, what you, good. what you want your yeses to look like. And I think if I say in my head, what am I saying yes to instead mm -hmm. of what am I saying no to then in my head, I'm not beating my out, beating myself up for the nose. Right. I'm cheering myself on for the yeses because you're choosing. Just like with a, think about your monthly budget for your household. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how good of an idea something is or how great something is on sale. If the money's not in the account, it's not in the account. Right. Right. <laughs> so let's think about our account of energy <laughs> or our um, account of time, our account That's of emotions. Way. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have to be um, intentional. Yes. about how you spend those things out of your account. So mm -hmm. you have your account of energy, time and emotions. So how are you going to spend that? And, you know, so I would hope maybe, and we can give some ideas and maybe even have future podcasts on creating your vision and creating your intentions. And what do you want your life to look like? What do you want your day to look like? Mm -hmm. When you start to get those, then you start to pick your yeses. And I think the more you understand what you want, the easier it is to see what your yeses are. Your yeses become yes. clear. When your yeses become clear, then it becomes pretty clear what you have to say no to because there's just not that extra right. increment of whatever in the bank account right. to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think you'll have an easier time seeing boundaries as a positive than a negative. And that's yeah. what I'd really like to encourage everyone to do here. Understand that what you're doing is choosing where your focus is going to go. Right. And give yourself permission. That's another big thing. Give mm -hmm. yourself permission to either eliminate things from your life or don't let other things in your life. If it doesn't help feed those yeses. Totally. Give your permission. Yes, definitely. Giving yourself permission is a big thing. Uh -huh. So we don't do that. We feel guilty. Yes, definitely. We, we feel like we ought to be able to do everything. Right. We have a lot of images or, or things we feel like out there that, that make us think that. Right. Or like if, if you're having, that's, that's kind of like the to do, you know, people asking us to do things. But I think sometimes it's also good to have right. boundaries 
with not just things, but maybe each other and kind of recognizing that, um, yeah, I'm busy and I'm out there and I, I talk to a lot of people during the day, but I also know a healthy boundary is in order for me to regenerate, I need some alone time, mm-hmm, which is hard to find being a mom, going to an office, you know, it, our, my kids are always at my home. If my kids aren't at my home, they're at school. Well, that means I should be working, mm-hmm. right? That's that whole, put it on yourself, mm-hmm. that, that kind of thing. So to find that space to be alone where the dog's not demanding, I have really demanding dogs if you have. I wake up an hour <laughs> in the morning before my dogs are awake when See, I can, beautiful. just so I can sit and meditate and write without even my dogs bothering I, me. How crazy I, is that? So I, I have so a boundary with my that. dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, yeah. That is imperative. Yeah. And I am so jealous of that because I'm going to fess up that I sleep with two dogs and my husband. It's a king size bed and two boxers and me, right? Yeah. So talk about some boundary issues. I've got them. <laughs> That's another boundary I have with my dogs. I, I used to do that and dogs. Oh, now. it's not good. It's not good. So the minute I like, if I try and sneak out of the bed to go to the bathroom so that the dog won't wake up. That's what happens because it's like, okay, okay. I know. So when we <laughs> tell you guys, this is a conversation among friends. You see what we're talking about. Look how yes. quickly we digressed in dogs <laughs> from this huge topic. But, uh, <laughs> it's true. My dogs are terrible. Like yeah. the minute that that's just first thing in the morning. Well, then I come home at three o'clock. I have an old dog. So she thinks she needs to have dinner at three, right? I so, mean, I think <laughs> sleep habits could be a whole nother topic and mm-hmm. podcast. And it's one that I really need. Totally. To take in a less than Obviously, I need. Obviously, I need yeah. the boundary yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, But so, you were talking about boundaries in relationships. Yeah, boundaries in relationships. Because I have found that um, some sometimes, because I meet with a lot of people over a week. And, yeah, and, they, and to remind have, you, this is your first time yeah. tuning in. Cheryl runs a Pilates and Gyrotonic studio. Yes. And so sees clients. I see clients. I do a lot of private sessions with people. Um, so over a day, you know, each client gets an hour of my time, right? So, um, sometimes, and and those sessions can get personal, Mm -hmm. right? And so, um, sometimes I feel like this is, that people want more of me than that hour, right? And I don't have more of me than that hour. I've really allotted that hour. So I have Mm -hmm. to have a very clear boundary that, um, no, the, the, this we're not going past this hour. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I don't know how to get clearer with that, but sometimes I feel like people are pulling. Maybe that's my own thing. I feel like they're pulling and they want more than what my schedule really allows. That's one thing. But also going into a different topic of the, these one-on-one sessions, energetically, I feel like sometimes people want to pull some of my energy out or emotionally, uh, or emotionally. Have real I mean, sometimes people see come you guys because they stuff. have deep stuff and deep pain, pain. yeah, yes. injuries. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like with uh, I have to have a boundary going into this each session, no matter how close or a loving relationship I have with the pe- the people, the boundary has to be um, clear, or else I take their stuff on. Because I see all these people during the day, and then if I take it home and spew it all over my house, it's not good. But I also, in order for the sessions to be great and for them to feel great too, I have to set a real clear boundary that I don't give them my crap. That if I'm worried about all this stuff happening in my personal life, I really need to leave that outside of the office so that when I come in that office and I go into that first client, that I have set a clear intention with where my energy is going to be, where my attitude is going to be, you know, that, uh, that I'm going to come from my heart and then I'm going to work from that place with them. And when I can do that very clearly, set that up, then it's so much better. I feel it. They feel it. The physical results are better. Mm-hmm. And by the end of the day, I'm not completely mm-hmm. depleted. I am actually energized and can then go home and deal with my dog that's yelling at me to feed mm-hmm. it. And I can deal with my children wanting help with their homework and this and that. Well, and you know, I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. That's I was going to speaking from the voice of the mommy here, yeah. which we both are. And all you mommies and daddies out mm-hmm. there, 
um, feel the same thing. I mean, I think that's another time when almost all of us, even if you don't have a Pilates and gyrotonic studio or don't work with clients in a medical practice or something like that, um, you have, if not children, you have mothers, aunts, sisters, yeah. brothers, whatever. And it's hard not to feel whatever they're feeling. Yeah. Or if true. they're having a bad day or if they're going through a difficult time to want to, you know, how people always say, oh, if I could take their pain on myself, I would. And we do tend to. Yeah. But even at that, we need to find at least a balance there, I think, where you have to also keep yourself well or you're not going to be able to be there for anyone else. Right. And you're not going to be able to um, look at even a difficult situation in the best light. Correct. If you don't step back and get a little distance, in other words, have a little bit of a boundary around that situation or around that other person's mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. So you can view it. I think you said more as an observer yes. than a participant yes. in someone else's situation. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, you may just get a little bit more insight Completely. and an increased ability to help Completely. them where let's talk about the other extreme of this. If you're putting yourself out there, never saying no, um, going to things that maybe you don't even like doing because they drain you, you are probably exhausted. And so many of us are running out there exhausted all the time. And then first of all, you just don't feel good, but you also don't have energy to do the things that maybe you most want or love to do. You're probably mm -hmm. catching anything that comes around and yeah. finding yourself sick at times mm -hmm. and you're not able to help yourself or others. And you're really not living your most beautiful life. You could live if that's how you're living it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? I know. So you, you tried to teach me before, like an exercise, say you have energy that's on a scale of one to 10. Okay. Yeah. Right, so so, so for that. what Amy's referring to, for example, so say I give somebody a, bite, um, a dumbbell and I tell them we're going to lift the dumbbell and you only have an effort of 10 to give to something, right? To, to, lift, to lift this dumbbell. I don't want you to give all 10 to the dumbbell. I want you to give two to your posture. I want you to give effort of two to your breath. I want you to give two to your intention. So that really only leaves you four out of your 10 left. And so maybe give four to lifting the dumbbell. But if you've given two to the posture, two to the breath, two to the intention, that dumbbell is going to be a whole lot lighter and efficient. And it's going to work better. Everything's going to work better when you've distributed that effort of 10 over the and lifting the dumbbell. So, you know, what it's similar to the bank account analogy <coughs> Correct. because what you're doing is intentionally saying, this is where I'm going to distribute my energy. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of goofy to make this analogy, but let's say that bicep was, yes. you know, the PTA at your kid's school saying, no, we want a six or we want right. a seven <laughs> and you feel guilty about, Okay, maybe not I should take it. it away from the breath part. Right. <laughs> then I don't breathe. Then right. I'm not intentional. Yeah. And it, I, it or just, I take it away from my posture and mm -hmm. then I have back pain. Because that's really what's happening. When you're yeah. taking it away, you're creating something that's not great. Right. You know? Well, and not in balance. Not and in not, balance. Yeah, to create mm -hmm. the most balance. And so, I mean, this gets to a different level when we start talking about the energy of this and the emotions of this. But I really do feel like, you know, energy comes in a lot of forms. Money, yes. the bank account is Money. one form, physical energy mm -hmm. when you're working out, mental energy, mental energy spiritual energy, um, taking care of things. There are so many different things. Mm -hmm. And we talk uh, all the time about intentionality. And I think a lot of people kind of understand, you know, I'm going to be intentional with my words. Right. Or I'm going to be intentional with my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to be intentional with my actions. Mm -hmm. What we're kind of trying to get at here is let's be intentional with our energy mm -hmm. also right? and where it goes right? because it can't go everywhere. Right. And therefore you set up a little boundary with it. But I also do want to correct myself in one way. Okay. Because here's the catch to this. Okay. In your analogy of 10. Yes. What we, have, we have a 10 of energy a day. Yeah. It also, I think, depends on what you give that energy to. So if you're giving it to things that bring you down, oh, 
then it can all not ever find the 10. Right, then the 10 might not be there. Right. But here's the, the magic key that we hope we can help you learn. We've learned ourselves. Yes. If you're giving it to things that uplift you, you might break above the 10 barrier. Yeah. yeah. And so in a way, when I say energy is limited, in a way it's not true. Right. Because let's say some of the energy you give out, and instead of the bicep analogy, let's look at your whole day. Mm-hmm. You're going to work. You're going to spend time with your spouse. You're going to spend time with your kids. You're going to maybe volunteer. You're going to clean up, <coughs> you know, whatever. If you also spend some time for yourself, and you know that's we're here to present you with a lot of meaningful ways to do that. Cheryl Correct. loves to start the day by running in a sort yeah. of rather than a Movement walking way. meditation, yeah. almost a running mm-hmm. meditation. I sit in meditation and journaling every morning. When you do those things that really elevate the sorts of energies you're in, really positive, life-affirming, full of light, love, joy, it will carry on into everything else you do, and you may find an extra little hidden source to get an extra kick right. or amount. Where you're 10 it's like getting, to 12. It's like getting a check in the mail you didn't know was coming yes. for that bank account. Yes. You, you might get an extra return on the way. On your day you're spending that energy too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. That helps. Mm-hmm. What other ways have you um, come up with to apply boundaries to balance to energy? Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I said we work with people at the studio and I have a lot of staff that work with me. And, um, I think Amy kind of touched on this a little bit, but if we go in as the instructor, so, and it's a physical therapy clinic, so we're dealing with people that have some injuries and stuff. If we go into the session or even the conversation before the session even begins with the idea that we're going to fix it instead of the idea that I'm going to listen and I'm going to be the observer and I'm going to guide you through this journey, then it, it doesn't, it means we're not really listening. Like, and there's no real boundary. It's like, I'm going to come in, I'm going to take over and I'm going to fix it. No, the boundary needs to be like Amy had said, the observer. Let's let, yes, I can guide you on a path of healing, but truthfully they're learning to heal their own pain and I mean, I hate using that word fix because, Mm -hmm. you know, this body and this life is a journey that isn't stopping until we're six feet under, really. (laughs) So um, to sit back and be the observer of what the client brings to me or say a friend brings to me or my child brings to me or a coworker brings to me, if I can sit back, be the observer, then I'm setting this clear boundary that I'm not going to take over and fix it. So then that helps me with my energy at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not so depleted and, but it's real easy for me to get sucked into that. I can fix it. And it's easier to keep the boundary with my clients because I intentionally work on that. But with my staff, I don't keep that boundary. I am always like, I can fix it because I feel like I should have well, to. Well, and we do it. that as parents for sure. Yeah. Okay. So this leads, I think, to the next part of this conversation. And you just you just touched on all of this and mm-hmm. what you were talking about. So I want to talk a little bit about why we have such a hard time with boundaries. <laughs> why do we have such a hard time saying yeah. no? Because we all do. Yes. We all have a yes. hard time. So, I mean, I'm gonna, we've said this so many times. We're students, not experts. The yeah. reasons we can talk about boundaries so much is because we have tried to do so much work on it because we need to do so need much to. work on it. <laughs> and constantly, constantly right. needing to do so much yes. work on it. So I think, I think there are a lot of reasons why people have trouble with boundaries, whether it's saying no to your kid's school or to something your spouse wants you to do or whatever. Totally. Fear of what will they think of me or, well, then who will do it? Or maybe it won't get done well. Or is is everything going to implode if I don't do it? Or will they not like me? Right. Or what's it going to look like if I, if I say no? Do I only have these friendships or this place in my community? 
because I always go and do mm-hmm. these things. Mm-hmm. And so in this and everything else, I think we all need to remind ourselves to say yes out of love, not fear. And that might be, you know, it's a little bit the same thing as saying, going back to the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeses. Don't look at your I yeses more than your no's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say yes out of love. It, yeah. it, when you say yes, make sure you're in vibing it with yes. that sort of yeah. positive, is, vital, yeah. mm-hmm. joyful energy. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, the other thing you touched on besides fear, and they're really the same thing, but it's control. Like you said, you find someone's with your staff or I said with my children, it's easier to just do it. Yes. Myself or, yeah. Or maybe a fear of asking someone else to help you. So you just do it your self Uh or fear of if I ask them to do it, are they going to be like, really? She can't do that herself. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes that happens with um, things I'll ask others to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And maybe I shouldn't have that, you know, mm-hmm. it should be okay to ask for help. Guess what? They can tell me no. And that's okay. Right. right. That's okay. And yes, yeah, so I guess that's uh-huh. the other thing is we need to respect when someone gives that's us a boundary boundaries. with us. We need to say, well, I understand, yeah. I understand yeah. that. That's a, and, that mm-hmm. is really good. Cause and if we get in that energy, then others will understand when we do as well. Totally. Mm-hmm. Totally. I definitely, um, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we need to take time for ourselves, take time for ourselves. We need to set boundaries, set some boundaries, whether it's the door hanger or right. the clock or, you know, may, even I said it cause like Amy has a much easier time with us, but doing her meditation in the morning when I'm like, okay, today you have to have a meditation. I can, mm-hmm. and y'all don't laugh. I might set a three minute timer. But I take I'm those not three gonna minutes. No, I, you know, I think <laughs> that's so minutes. important. We've said it. We've said it in previous podcasts, but I'm yes. going to say it again here. If this is the first time you're listening. It's my a little bit is better than not a theory. Right. Like I mean, those three minutes. One really minute. Help if you only <laughs> have one minute, do one minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's okay because it's okay. You know, one minute is a whole lot more than. Zero. zero. Exactly. <laughs> it means so much more than zero. Yes. And it's yes. a start. Yes. And you're, it's something you're learning. Just like you don't start people out with a 10 pound dumbbell. Out. Right. No, mm-hmm. you don't. You, you start with baby steps. Yeah. You and you build teach up. them how to breathe before you teach them to pick mm-hmm. anything up. Yeah. You know? you so create, the, create hope, a habit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Create a habit. I hope this really helps. I hope we've been able to give you some little tips and really just kind of spark the conversation with boundaries and maybe brought some insight on some, um, things in our life where we maybe do or don't have good boundaries and just start the conversation. You know what else I want to give them? Yeah. Permission. Yeah. Like, it's okay to set boundaries and it's yeah. okay to say no. Uh-huh. And if you don't have an easy time giving yourself permission, then we're giving you permission right, right now. <laughs> Show up and just gave you permission. Set some boundaries. Say no. Take some time. Find yeah. some joy. Yeah. Find some joy. Find some balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And find enjoy. So, um, Thanks. Thanks for listening. I think this yeah, kind of wraps our little conversation on boundaries up. And if you want to make some comments below, we would love to hear what you have yeah. to say. If there's and more you want to talk about, put that down there. If you have other ideas for other podcasts that you would like us to embrace and or touch expand on, upon this or, one. Yeah, or expand on this one. Um, we may so say no. We may <laughs> say no. <laughs> but please. Working on our boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> We or we might say yes. Yeah. This might be what our yes uh-huh. is. <laughs> but thanks for listening today. Yeah, and be sure to check us out at www.inviblife.com. We hope you enjoy it. We want to hear from you, and we look forward to the next time. Awesome. Thanks Thank for listening. You. Thank you for listening to the In Vibe Life podcast. For more information and to join our community, be sure and check out our website at www.invibelife.com. We look forward to sharing with you.